Shut up and sit down. Hi guys, I'm Dodge, this is Big Mech's Workshop and Paint Studio and this is the first of a um, series of reviews we're going to be doing on the AK Interactive stuff because we've got all the stuff on the shelf, we thought we'd do a little review and tutorials for them all uh, so I've primed this back part of a Stormbird with um, black primer from Vallejo now you're going to be using chipping fluid, you can leave a black surface but you don't really want to as you're going to chip away that paint and uh, have the underneath paint showing you don't want plain black if you're going for a rust effect so I'm going to put model air burnt umber on I'm going to give it a uh, very generous coat of that but you don't have to worry too much about the patches because in a sec we're going to deliberately put on patches with model air rust this is so when we chip away the fluid we're going to have different colorations in those gaps rather than a uh, blank boring color this is just a preference, this is how I prefer to do it myself. Then we're going to use Games Workshop Morning Fang Brown because that gives a lovely orange rust effect. And again, that's going on in patches as well. And it's pretty watered down so it blends with everything else. So you can bring that up as high as you want or um, as little as you want. You could just do a block colour of Burnt Umber or Morning Fang Brown if that's what you wanted to do. I'm guessing you could do the same sort of effect using a stippling brush or something like that. Now before we end up putting the fluid down, I'm going to cover this with a uh, gloss varnish and the reason for that is I don't want to chip this paint away when we do the chipping. So I'm going to hit it with a gloss varnish and then in a second once I've coated it fully with a gloss varnish, I'm going to uh, hit it with a uh, matte varnish to uh, bring that back down and that's just to form a uh, layer over the top of the uh, paint job that we've done so it's protected when we uh, start scrubbing away because you obviously don't want to chip that down back to the black or if you if you scrub a bit too hard all the way back down to uh, the plastic color on the underneath now this is what we're using the AK interactive heavy chipping fluid uh, I don't usually follow the instructions on the back if you want to read them you can pause the video back here but uh, we've been using this for a while on a lot of our models. Um, I might show you a, a photo at the end of a Gorka note that I uh, did with the same sort of technique as this is not the greatest of paint jobs I'm doing here. This is just a quick demo of how this works. On one side I'm going to use my airbrush to uh, put the chipping fluid on and the other side I'm going to put on using just a brush so we can uh, see the difference in the effects. Now this side I'm going to put on uh, with the airbrush and you will notice it's coming out quite patchy. But uh, also what I learned recently, using just a brush alone, or you know, from experience just doing this a lot, is that um, it will set like a primer and stick firmly to the model and level itself out. So I'm not too worried about how speckly it is there, you can put on one or two layers, it'll just build up. You want to be quite generous with your chipping fluid, it will make your life easier. Also realised why doing this, um, that... Um, it does dry quite quickly on these uh, models. Um, I thought this side would come up really streaky, which is what I was talking about a second ago. But it decided it would uh, dry quite flat like a primer, so that's a bonus to this uh, particular material. Although there is the downside. The downside is that um, if you're going to try and paint over this now, that's going to be a wet paint and it's going to pull the heavy chipping fluid off. Obviously we're going to need some layers of colour over the top of this to show how it works. So I'm going to be using Game Air Filthy Brown. Uh, which is just a yellow I like to use. But I'm painting it yellow because later on in this small series there will be a series of the streaking grimes. And one of them we've got is for yellow models. After that we're going to use Model Air Interior Yellow uh, as a highlight. Just following all those... Um, creases because we can fill those in with like an oil wash which is something we'd usually do or even the um, streaking grime itself will fill those in giving them the depth that they need and uh, this is not the neatest of jobs at all it's uh, model air german yellow just giving it a very quick edge highlight 
but I wanted to make the point that um, if you're going to do chipping fluid, you want to do all your armor work first. This is going to save you a lot of effort in the long run. When you start chipping paint off, you don't want to be painting the edges of your model and then having to miss a bit where you've done a chip and then onto the next bit. It's easier just to paint the whole thing on, then chip it away, um, and then go round the chips with this color. Don't end up going round the chips with this color by the end of this video, but um, if you do that, it really brings the um, depth to them. You just do the bottom half of the chips. And all this is, is a regular water straight from the tap and a toothbrush. Now this is the side I did with the um, airbrush. All I'm gonna show you is you don't need much water here at all. Uh, you really don't. If you put too much water on and um, scrub away at it, the entire set of paints will just come straight off. It's uh, very water soluble, so when you've actually finished doing your chipping and you're happy with it, you're gonna to wanna to varnish that again to seal everything in place. I mean, you saw how easy that was to scrape off. So I've dried the brush off now. What I'm gonna do is speed this up. And um, it's easier just to use the end bristles or the side bristles and just keep chipping away a little bit at a time. Less is more with this stuff. Um, you will find that if you're not patient with it, you'll end up taking massive chunks of uh, chipping fluid off and massive chunks of paint. I prefer to put most of my chipping around the edges and moving parts, but uh, I guess it depends what you're building and painting. And by the end of this video, you'll be able to see where I've done lots of different um, strokes with the brush. It's actually better to use a old toothbrush. This one's quite new. Um, because the bristles are softer and it uh, just gives a, a much better result it's not quite so stark and you don't run the risk of pulling huge chunks of paint off just because the bristles are, are firm and have got a good grip as you can see there that took a big chunk off and I wasn't really trying to but you just keep dabbing away at it with this and uh, using the edges of the brush to poke bits of paint off basically. I really like this um, product, I use it on quite a lot of stuff, I mean some people will prefer to just paint the chips on, which is fair enough, but what you'll actually get with this because of the layers of paint is a slight recess where the chip is giving it this whole sort of raised edge look and when you highlight that it looks absolutely brilliant. Now this is the side I did with just the brush and uh, again That'll come off really easy with a lot of water. And uh, I did find with the side I did with the brush that um, a lot more paint came off a lot easier. And that's probably because it was on a lot thicker. But as you can see, uh, just stippling away and taking bits of paint off there. It also helps add to that sporadic pattern. If you could use different tools, like a different set of different shaped toothbrushes, as you can see, some of those parts came off in much bigger chunks than I was uh, hoping for. And I also had to spray this side with the airbrush with the paint, not the chipping fluid. So when it, when it gets right down to it, um, I think that marks it down for a uh, product, but it's not the fault of the company. It's just, it's designed for airbrush work. Um, I use an airbrush all the time, so that's okay. Uh, if you haven't got an airbrush, you will struggle with uh, taking a bit too much off. I think it can be done, but you, you will struggle with this product a bit more. I've seen people using the uh, hairspray technique, but you can't fault this. Hairspray has a sort of a sticky consistency to it, and uh, I don't really like using that. You can see there's a whole variety of different brush strokes on this that I was uh, trying to show you, and uh, that's our new rating system for these. So this product gets uh, 8 out of 10 squigs because it's not a, really a, a good product for everybody because you know, it works best with the airbrush. And that's basically all there is to this video, guys. I will be doing some more work on this, and we'll be putting some streaking grime and doing some other AK Interactive reviews. It is a good product. Go out and tr try it out yourself, guys, and we'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching.